Chairs, I want to raise the question of Camp Ashraf. As you know, uh, last December, uh, Martin Kubler, the special UNAMI uh, High Representative in uh, Iraq, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Iraqi government without first having got the approval of the residents of Camp Ashraf, which he had pledged to get in advance nor uh, was he acting in accordance with the wishes of the UN Secretary General who said the uh, Ashraf people must approve the MOU. Now yesterday he issued a press release saying that Camp Liberty is ready for the displacement of the 3,300 people from Ashraf when in fact there is no freedom of movement, they will not be allowed to take their personal possessions, they will be surrounded by thousands of military and police. Uh, you know, this is a, not a refugee camp. This is fundamentally a prison. Please, can you s insist that the Iraqi government upholds the, uh, their obligations and don't allow them to get away with this kind of uh, unorthodox treatment? Thank you. Well, as you know, I've raised these issues with the Iraqis from the beginning. You and I have been uh, in uh, many dialogues about this, and rightly so. It's a very worrying situation. I do know that Martin Kobler has been in touch with the residents of Camp Ashraf throughout this process. There is a lot of information that it's quite hard to unpick exactly what's happening and there are different kinds of interests at work in this whole process. He will be here tomorrow and I know he's meeting with you because he knows not only how important this is to you but how important it is to members of this house and we'll be meeting with him tomorrow to make sure that those messages get through. Onorevole Kelam. Grazie mille, Presidente. Madam Ashton, I would like to return to the question of my colleague Stevenson, because I think the UN mediation negotiated by Mr. Kobler has not provided sufficient guarantees for the safety and freedom of choice for more than 3,000 people there, which is contrary to the position taken by the European Parliament several years ago already. Because Iraqi authorities have clearly violated the relocation program, launching missile attacks against the camp. And uh, I think uh, the role of your representative have been lately rather marginalized, because have even denied visa to Iraq. So my question is, if you said that their relocation to Camp Liberty is way to the future, I think is a very ominous way. And I urgently call upon you to use your authority to speak more vocally and more decisively to solve this humanitarian crisis, which is still pending. Because these are people who are consistently advocated for truly democratic secular and nuclear-free Iran, what we need. Thank you. Mr. Ehrenhauser, from the non-attached members, for one minute, please. Secondly, on Camp Ashraf, the deadline's been put off, the deadline by which it's to be moved. There is the suggestion that asylum should be granted to people from Camp Ashraf in the EU. I wonder whether this is a proposal that's still on the table, and if so, I wonder what you think of it. Thank you very much. The next is Mr. Kaczmarek in a minute and a half. Thank you very much, Madam High Representative, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's any doubt that the European Parliament has to speak out uh, on the atomic program of Iran. It it wasn't we, but the IAEA that expressed concerns and fears of uh, the military aspect of the atomic program. And I think there is proof that they are moving towards the construction of atomic weapon. I think the non-proliferation treaty having been signed by Iran, that country therefore has the responsibility to uh, report its nuclear activities and also the, the transit of any nuclear material. The Security Council in its resolution 1929 of 2010 called on uh, 
Iran to to do its bit. It was the Iranian government, however, that uh, threatened the peace and stability of the region, not us. I would ask the High Representative to ensure that the she, that she doesn't forget the very difficult situation in Camp Ashraf, as has been mentioned by a number of other colleagues. These are problems that we all need to solve together. I thank you, and I thank you that you kept within your time slot. The next to speak is Mr. Stasny in a minute and a half. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Iranian refugees from Ashraf will move to a new Camp Liberty, which Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly compared to a prison camp. Green light was issued by UN missions in Iraq. This approval was granted without consent of Ashraf residents, despite promise of UN envoy Ambassador Martin Kobler to do so. EU should take a lot more active role with Mrs. Ashton's direct involvement, especially after being rejected by Iraqi government from taking active part in the negotiations. Therefore, we need to stand shoulder by shoulder with our US friends in exerting pressure on Iraq and the UN for quick and human resolution. By the way, people like refugees of Ashraf are the best hope for democratic and nuclear-free Iran. Thank you. Colleagues, too, of course, mentioned uh, the fact that Camp Ashraf has an Iranian population. And I've already mentioned a couple of times in our question hour the importance that we attach to trying to find a satisfactory resolution for the people of Camp Ashraf. My concern is straightforward, is to try and find a way in which we can keep them completely safe and give them a future. There are members of the UN in discussion with member states where there are issues of citizenship. There are the members of the uh, High Commission for Refugees who are engaged with this. And Martin Kobler, who as I've indicated already, will be here tomorrow. We work closely with the US, we work closely with the international community, and we keep this on the agenda in our discussions uh, with Iraq. But it is important that we move forward, that the people find a future, not that we simply keep them there because uh, we don't have a plan. There does seem to be, not a perfect plan, a compromise solution, of course, but one in which if we do it properly, I believe there is the potential for future for these people that will keep them safe, which, as I've said, is our final objective. My final